Moving in New York City isn't easy, but by the end of this video, you'll see how I navigated my journey and maybe you'll learn about how you can navigate yours. And even if you have no plan to move to New York City, stick around because maybe you'll learn a fun fact that'll make your friends go, wow, next time you visit. That was kind of cheesy. I think I'm gonna cut that part out. But my story starts out fairly typical. Two months before the end of this lease here, my landlord reached out and it was like, hey, do you guys wanna resign? But unfortunately, the band here decided to break up. Honestly, we all just had different neighborhoods we wanted to live in, no hard feelings. But essentially, I became a free agent. I could decide to go the solo route or try to build a super team, uh, which pretty much means living alone versus living with roommates. Making this decision, the first thing I thought about was budget. I knew it was pretty unlikely I was gonna find another $700 steal like this place, so I raised my budget to a modest $1,200. A major pro being I could live in a room where I couldn't almost touch both walls at the same time. Now, in a lot of cities, 1200 might be enough for a decent sized studio, but not in New York City. So I was gonna have to live with at least one, probably two or more roommates. Fortunately, one of my current roommates shared a similar vision, budget, neighborhood, wants. So naturally we paired up. But like the one bedroom market, the two bedroom market isn't too forgiving either. So we went on the hunt for a third player to round out our big three. After a few weeks of asking all of our friends and abusing all of our connections, we finally found a third. Get your head out of the gutter. This was crucial because the last thing you want is to live with a rando. Now I have had many random roommates before and some of them have become my closest friends, but there's always the risk that you'll end up with people that you don't vibe with and that can create a situation where you don't feel comfortable in your own home, which is something that you should try to avoid. But I will admit that is rare. So if you do have to go the rando route, don't be afraid. The next thing you wanna think about is what neighborhood do you wanna live in? Now, to be honest, this isn't always a linear process of budget, neighborhood, etc. Knowing what neighborhoods you wanna live in before you find roommates and set a budget can can be beneficial as well. But this is when you really start to narrow it down. For my first six months in the city, I lived in bed Brooklyn. I was pretty limited by budget, so I found a room with a grand dose for 1100 a month. Not bad considering I was only 35 minutes to work and within a 10 minute walk of a train, which were my only two real criteria at the time. As that sublease came to an end, I was approached with an opportunity to join a lease with a good old friend and a few new ones. And I pounced at the opportunity. Here I paid the famous $700 rent. For the time, it worked for me. I was willing to live in a shoebox to slash my rent and save a few hundred more a month. Money I could put towards achieving my long-term goals. Now, I think I'm gonna dox myself, which shouldn't be an issue because I'm moving in a few days, but I guess we'll find out. So I've kind of hinted at my neighborhood throughout these videos and given away some very obvious clues, perhaps naively. If you haven't figured it out, my apartment is on Long Island. You know it, baby. And living here has taught me a lot about what I want in a future apartment. The pros have taught me I want a living room where I can chill and host friends. I want to be close to the subway because that's my link to the city. And I want to have in-unit laundry because that is clutch in New York City. But I've learned a lot from the cons as well. Right now we're on the JMZ line, which is okay, but there are a lot of probably better, faster lines in Brooklyn that I could live close to. And even though we have a pretty big space to host people, it can be kind of a trek to get here. So a line with quicker access to the majority of Manhattan would be nice as well. Additionally, I'm not obsessed with my life entertainment, but I do like to go out every now and then. So it'd be cool to be, you know, closer to places like bars, restaurants, bakeries, coffee shops, that kind of stuff. There is a bit of that around here, but not as much as other parts of Brooklyn. And it'd be nice to be able to get there without, you know, a transfer or excessive walking. So taking all this into account, it was a no brainer we would be staying in Brooklyn. Manhattan is cool and all, but Brooklyn is a bit quieter, a bit greener. And I just feel like it's a bit more authentic, filled with, you know, creatives and culture and not just, you know, tech, finance, real estate, you know, like Manhattan has kind of become. And the reason why I consider neighborhood above a lot of other constraints is because this isn't just where you live, it's your community. Being surrounded by the people and places that make you feel at home and comfortable is extremely important. But it's important to know that plans change. And um, I think I'm gonna call an audible. So we lost the house. When I started making this video, we were this close on closing on a new place. I was pretty excited about this place, maybe too excited. And in this last part of the video, I was gonna explain exactly how we decided on it. We had toured almost 10 places up to this point. We did our cost benefit analysis and we decided that this was the place that best fit our needs. Plus they're gonna give us a free month to move in early. I thought being well prepared and doing things in advance paid off. So we put in an application, paid our application fee and we didn't hear back from them for five or six days. We were a bit worried, but it was a long weekend. Maybe they took a couple of vacation days. But this Tuesday afternoon, we got the text. Sorry, the apartment you applied for has been already rented. While they couldn't tell us that before we paid the application fee, 
I don't know, which is pretty scummy of them. I am gonna try to get that back. But other than that, I'm doing all right. Yeah, it's a bit disappointing, but I got a fun couple of weeks ahead of me. If you couldn't tell, I'm not in New York. I'm in Boston. W one sec. <laughs> you can see I had my dunks earlier today. <laughs> I'm actually here to watch a hockey game with some friends from college, which is like one of the most Boston things you could be doing. And uh, I'm gonna celebrate my birthday here this weekend. Hitting 500 subs by that point would be the best birthday gift. But then I'm gonna be on my real vacation. I'm traveling to another city and well, I'm gonna keep that a surprise, but I will be making content there. So stick around for that. Then when I'm back in New York mid June, I guess I'll restart the apartment search saga. The good thing about New York is that it's truly never too late to find an apartment. It does give me extreme anxiety not knowing where I'm gonna be living in less than a month. And we're not gonna have the luxury of a slow move in, but that's all right. Sometimes you gotta be a little uncomfortable to make a change. But as I move out of my old place and into my new one, I really wanna drop a house tour video and a new room tour because I know people like those. So keep your eyes peeled out for that. But for now, that's it for me. I'll see you soon, bye.